Okay. So I come up with these in my head. I write them down. I write them in my phone. But this one I just came up with. Uh, and it is derived from another idea that I, I think of in my head. But so this one goes like this. How does it go? Okay, okay, okay. Um, you can um, you can imagine anything you want, and that's that's crazy. But if I said I wanted to go across the whole universe and back, I could do that. And you know they say anything is possible, but I could actually do that. And you'd go across the whole universe. And maybe you know, the universe is circular and you just loop around uh, like the earth and you're back to where you started. But in my imagination, that's possible. And they say anything is possible, but so it's, it's true. It basically is. Because if you could think it, then you, you derive that and you imagined it and you have that in your imagination so you, what did you imagine? You imagined that scenario. Um, and it's, it's, so you basically made it exist. You made it become what it is. You created, you created that thing. And so, uh, here's where, here's my, like, my explanation for that. We have the idea of zero, the idea of nothing. And it means that idea means completely nothing because nothing is basically nothing. Like you can't explain it. You can't uh, define it, but we know it's there. We basically can't define it, but we know it's there. So how do we really know it's there? But, but the real thing is um, we know it is because we can think it. Um, and we see it in math problems too. We know one minus one is zero. So we can define zero. We can define nothing. We know it's there. And so if we imagine something just because it isn't existing where we can touch it, see it, feel it, uh, hear it, taste it or smell it doesn't mean it, it doesn't exist. So they, when they say anything is possible, it really is. And that's just imagining things. So basically all my ideas are wrapped around this whole idea of zero and one. Where did I get this one from? It's just, it's just the opposite of zero, but like my, what I think of the opposite of zero is, but But I have many ideas wrapped around this whole idea of zero. And uh, it's the idea of nothing, but we know it's there. So with that, we know it's there and we know it's not. Because we know it's not because because <laughs> it's nothing. And we know it's there because we defined it. And we can know that is it is nothing. But, but the weird thing about it is it's, it's both there and not there. So how can something be itself and its opposite? How can something be that? How do we know that? So that's basically what I wrap my mind around like a lot. Um, and I try to think like about every t little thing that comes across my mind. I, I think that, you know, what if it could be exactly what it is and still be its opposite at the same time? Um, that's that's what I think about. But I have many more ideas written down in my book and in my phone about <clears throat> about. Uh, the idea of zero and negative one and one.
uh, a negative one, just uh, another one. But yeah, uh, I shouldn't have scratched my eye. I was eating chili mangoes. Ah. Uh. That's basically what I wanted to say about the idea of zero. Um, and that it is both itself and its opposite. And I just think that it's that's crazy. How can how can something like that happen? So yeah.